Hello and welcome back as we gather together on this fifth week in Lent. And today's chapter is titled, Prayer and Perseverance. And the scripture comes from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. And our focus verse for the, for the chapter comes from verse 13. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. And today, the reading out of the chapter, this section is titled, Single-Minded Focus. In developing a new habit or way of life, one often develops a singular focus or a driving passion to be free of debt, to lose weight, or to graduate from college. Disciplined persons then change their behaviors in order to arrive at these destinations. We find that shopping as a recreational activity loses its appeal. We think twice before eating when we are not actually hungry. Our walking and then running becomes a more common part of our daily routine. We inquire about ways to access education, beginning where we are. Some dream, some calling, places this focus at the center of our lives. We want to be free of the anxiety of financial debt. We recognize the danger of unhealthy patterns of eating and exercising. We yearn for learning that will create opportunities in life and work. The dream or calling in time begins to define us and we become more focused people. The Apostle Paul speaks clearly of his focus. I do this one thing. He is aware that he has not arrived. His life has the qualities of movement, humility, and self-examination. And so he is singularly driven toward a particular outcome. This single-minded pursuit can be found in traditions of Scripture, particularly in the Psalms. In Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, the truly happy person doesn't follow wicked advice, doesn't stand on the road of sinners, and doesn't sit with the disrespectful. Instead of doing those things, these persons love the Lord's instruction, and they recite God's instruction day and night. They are like a tree replanted by streams of water, which bears fruit at just the right time, and whose leaves don't fade. Whatever they do, succeeds. The singular focus of the psalmist is to meditate on the Lord's instruction. The outcome is likened to tree planted by streams of living waters, which yield an abundant harvest. In Paul's own life and in his instruction to the Philippians, the ultimate goal is a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ in his life, suffering, death, and resurrection and such a focused life produces a community that bears the fruit of humility, service, adoration, and fellowship. The fruit comes from the single-mindedness of spiritual practice, a wholehearted devotion to Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord. To confess Jesus Christ as Savior is to relinquish the drive to justify ourselves in our own goodness or righteousness. To confess Jesus Christ as Lord is to place our lives in submission to Him and to follow His example. To be sure, these are confessions that we make along the way, but they are also ones that we renew in every season of life. We do not point back to a moment in time when we made a decision to embark on the Christian life without a thought about the implications of that turning point for each successive movement in our journeys. Because we are tempted to trust in our own righteousness, to deny our own sinfulness, and to seek our own power, we have a constant need to renew our faith. In reciting his own spiritual struggle, Paul encourages the Philippians and us to do the same. Finally, we persevere in order to reach a destination. In Paul's language, the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. More than one biblical scholar has asked the obvious question, what is the prize? The answer is not easily discovered. 
one has to consider the corpus of Paul's writings to the first generations of those who follow Jesus to approach some semblance of a response. We will be helped in our search by locating the importance of call in Paul's life. He is clearly called from one way of life to another, from persecutor to evangelist, from skeptic to believer. His call experience, narr narrated in Acts chapter 9, includes both the call to confess Jesus as Savior and Lord and the call to ministry. As Fred Craddock notes in his commentary on Philippians, these are not separate experiences in Paul's journey. The call is clear, convincing, and unmistakable. Of course, Paul's call is not the template for every Christian's life. Note how different is the call to Timothy, which Paul describes in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Timothy's call was a formative experience that came developmentally through his grandmother and his mother. Some who read some who read this study will have a dramatic experience of call, similar to Paul. Others will have known a more natural exposure to the faith, as with Timothy. Regardless, it is the call of God that leads us toward the prize, the end, the destination. Our citizenship is in heaven, Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. It is heaven to which he is called, along with the Philippians and us. The upward call reminds us of the repetitive language of descending and ascending in Philippians. Paul wants to be in heaven with the Lord, and yet he is motivated also to be present with his friends at Philippi. Jesus empties himself and takes the form of a servant, but God has highly exalted him. The upward call is experienced paradoxically through a life of obedience to God and humility toward one another. The fullness of this upward call is surely one that includes both this life and the life to come. We know Christ in the present moment, and yet we confess in the words of the Apostles' profound meditation on love that now we know only in part. Then, when we have finally reached the prize for which we strive, when are in the presence of God, we shall know, even as we are fully known. In closing, here are a few questions for reflection and discussion. What negative habits would you like to eliminate? Or what positive habits would you like to undertake? How might you focus your efforts toward these goals? What does God want you to leave in the past in order that you might be freed for faithful living in the present and future? And the final question, what can you do in your prayer life to continue straining forward toward Christ? And our focus for the week is, make a list of three changes you would like to see in your own spiritual practices. One might be an activity you wish to give up or stop. A second might be a renewed time of prayer or study. And a third might be intentional time strengthening a relationship. Can you commit to a period of one month to see these changes emerge? After you make your list, reflect on it each day in prayer this week. Ask God to help you discern the particular shape of God's upward call in your life and to help you persevere as you strive toward it. Thank you for joining me during this fifth week in Lent. And as we get ready to go our separate ways, let us go to God in prayer. O oh God, grant me the humility to recognize my flaws and failures, but also the confidence to trust in your power that makes all things new through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. See you next week.